well, yeah, SAS protection. We are not drawing any army, but we are getting some good project protection for our cards. I love all these SAS folders. They do a really nice range of holographic folders. Now, some of these folders I've had for many, many years, so they've done very well to withstand getting them in and out, adding cards, taking cards out, all that kind of stuff. You know, playing cards and all that sort of thing. So they've done well to withstand all that. Now, these are Voyager cards from the hit Star Trek series Voyager. Soon to be a new Star Trek series. Can't wait to see what that's like, but very familiar characters. So these basically have scenes of the movie. Oh, sorry, of the TV series. And they also make up a playable game as well. Um, I've tried it out. It's a very good game, actually. The Star Trek ones, from what I have played, are always very well put together, usually. They work very well. So, you've got lots of scenes. Some very good characters. Um, of course, Voyager had quite a large um, cast of characters. So there's lots to choose from, and also then they've got like things like their equipment, which would be like a say a trainer card in Pokemon, for example. You know, it would, it would help some way in the game, but obviously the gameplay is quite different. You've got that nice Star Trek logo on the back, so I think they're good quality. They're very well made. So this is Hero Attack. So in a similar premise to the football ones, you got the rules there, and then you've got various characters from the Marvel Universe. So they seem to do more of the Marvel characters um, in trading card games than DC ones, but they did do some DC ones as well. Now we've got a few hollows here. That's a nice one, that one's lovely Avengers. In America, looking very proud. Eh? They, again, they're, they're good quality because you know, they're, they're not expensive to match attach, you know. They're good quality and they're not nice and that. Yeah, they have like a power rating. You expect Mr. Captain America to be quite powerful. It's nice to be able to pick. They've got, they're from the Avengers series, so they do like different exp uh, expansions. You see their power rating's different, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So. Captain America is more powerful than Beast. Hmm, interesting. Or maybe that's their overall rating. Which attacks again, this time with Doctor Who. Uh, the 11th Doctor and Kalara, you can see on the front there. Uh, this was a blinder I got with... Um, sorry, a blinder. <laughs> it was a blinder. They played a blinder, this. It was a blinder that I got with a few packs of cards. Now, the, there's some really there's a few different sets I've got in here. So I've got some of the match attacks and some of the expansions. Now this one, let me just check... This is, yeah, Alien Armies. Is this Alien Armies? Uh, yes. Which says Alien. It doesn't say Alien Armies on the front. I think it was. And, as you can see, they're similarly to the other ones. They've got a star rating. Um, now, this is nice because it um, has characters from current Doctor of the Time, which was when Maxim Myth was still in reign, to um, older characters. he got nice... Uh, Holofoil Alien, which is Alpha Centuria, who of course recently appeared, nice to see a reference to, in modern Doctor Who. Um, yeah, there's a much older character. See who you recognise. You should recognise him. Now a star of late night American TV. Uh, formerly a star of EastEnders, aren't they? Yeah, you got some... They've got some very familiar faces in Doctor Who and uh, Torchwood, which we will come on to shortly. So that's Match Attack. Yep, and I said uh, come on to shortly. Uh, Torchwood, the series that I wanted um, much more of. How are you doing, Yoshi? You're right, yep, good. I'm not sure, quite sure what Snivy's doing to you, but that's fine. Um, yeah, I love Torchwood, and I, I mean, it certainly had its ups and downs, but I think in general it was a series that should have come on continued for much longer so again you'll see some familiar faces remember when Martha went over to Torchwood so it is like the uh, Holby City to Casualty you know if they left uh, whole, the main show they could go on to the spin-off but that unfortunately did not carry on I don't think they did any trading cards as the much underrated and unfortunately unwatched um, class which was a recent spin-off of Doctor Who We've got a nice hollow foil rat x-ray in there. That's very, very nice. 
Well, quite a lot of these because I once bought a booster box of these. They had like about 15 boosters in the box for like under £10. They were very reasonable on eBay. Again, because they don't sell for much, but if you're a fan, you know, and you know, I'm not buying them to sell, so these ones, you know, I'm buying there for my collection, so. I buy, you know, of services I like in general, so talks with Dot 2, but I also get some sort of quirky ones that I might just find interesting or maybe might hold value one day. Another, another Doctor Who folder. And this one has the actual Doctor Who cards. Uh, I've got quite a lot of these as well quite a lot of booster packs so about 150 a pack there's rick from holby i like that episode that was a good episode um that was the uh, new york one wasn't it very good episode so this has a lot of familiar characters and this is again these are games you can play it's quite a simple one to pick up but it's fun enough if you're a fan of doctor who we've got a nice holophile martha now we got uh, poor Martha's a bit trapped there. Eh? The light's not so good. There we go. Ah, uh, the scarecrows. Yeah, that was definitely some good episodes in this era. These cards are released. Extreme. This was an expansion. You can see you've got Empire Dalek there. And look, we've got a retro Doctor. That was uh, one of the most popular Doctors, uh, Colin Baker. And um, these are other. These are the alien army ones. Let's see. That doesn't want to fold properly. What's up with this page? Why won't you fold? What's matter? It's Lucas. God, how many standards ones do they have? Look, we've got two spaghetti faces. You say two eyes are better than one, so she must be in a very better situation. Plenty of tenth doctor for all you ten doctor fans. Tenth doctor fans, rather, which there are rightly so many. David Tennant is just all round legendary. Look at these, we've got some nice hollow file. There's a pig slave there. And that's a Doctor Who one. Interesting, I didn't manage to collect many of these. Um, I have to look out for them. They're called lambing cards. I don't know if they did them in any other services other than Marvel, but this is their Marvel Hero series. They did quite a lot, which was basically an excuse to mix all the Marvel characters together. Um, and they, these are very different. Now, we'll get them out because it probably doesn't showcase too well in the folder. You grab one out. Now these aren't technically cards as in paper because look, they're uh, they're um, laminated sort of thing. So there's the human torch. And basically the reason for this is, um, I don't, haven't uncovered it yet, but you, you got a play mat when you bought this um, starter pack like I bought. As you can see, I tend to get a starter pack where I got the folder and like a pack, couple of packets of cards with them or something. Um, and... Um, they have sort of a code on them and they have sort of their power rating and you put it on the board and it and it sort of um sort of makes up inside the battlefield the battle with the character you're using it was it was quite effective actually um i don't think they ran them for that long but they were a good idea and as you can see that's all i have currently at the moment not sure if they did any hollow ones how well hollow would work on this kind of material but yeah i've got plenty more to fill that so if you want to send any my way please do now, fond of this folder as well. Uh, I can see I wrote whenever I got this, I think about at least five years ago, I collected these ones. Superman, New Adventures of Lois and Clark and Babe Barbwire, which is exactly what's in here. So let's start with the former. I don't know about you, but I love this 90s series of Lois and Clark. It's brilliant. Dean Cain, Terry Hatcher, it really was great. And the whole cast, um, tongue-in-cheek comedy type. Uh, light-hearted series that played on the relationship between Lois and Kent more than anything even you could say more than the Superman element they were very very good um, very fond of that actor there who played Perry so on the back you just basically had some uh, explanation of what the characters were doing in their various storylines let's see if you remember some of these characters such a great series wasn't perfect because the endings the, makers interfered and really messed up where the series was going should have really ran for longer it had enough steam but unfortunately yeah oh dear sometimes these things happen 
it was good why well, it's good and as you can see i've got a lot of these somebody needs to put a t-shirt on and that'll recognize these now i've i've been to a fair few conventions and i've often just missed the day when dean kane's been at them i'd, I'd like to go when dean kane's there um he's thanking for his time in superman and he's done some other interesting projects and I've heard he's a thoroughly uh, nice guy, so that's always a plus in the Invisible Man episode. I remember that very clearly. And he's maybe a bit a lovely nostalgia, you know. This was, you know, he's very distressed there. Why was he so distressed? There? I don't remember Superman ever being that distressed. Was that when he found out the series had been cancelled? Because that would be enough. Um, since you can't have Superman, Lois accepts the affection of the second most powerful man in Metropolis. When she says yes, Lex Luthor, Superman's anguished no shatters glaciers in the arctic don't remember that's not an iconic scene i have to go back and watch that i thought it might also be because you've just seen the current version of lex luthor in the superman and batman but, uh, i actually didn't completely hate that version i can actually see some merit behind it i just wanted to make a cheap joke mm. it's like some nightmarish uh, scenario where everyone's become superman that's from that shot is when the series start when the uh, iconic theme tune kicks in they use that shot right now we're on barbed wire now if you're not sure what barbed wire was it was a vehicle for Pamela Anderson it couldn't be Pamela Anderson it couldn't be made more for now um she was known for two distinctive assets really um one was being in Baywatch and the other was being a very nice person because from what I've seen her being interviewed she always comes across as a very nice person and they are of course the two assets. Now this is barbed wire and it's sort of a it's, it's sort of a sci-fi series and it was meant to be a vehicle for her. It wasn't a big success but on repeat video viewing it certainly works as a sort of a in a cult watch culty watchable way. Um, I've watched it a couple of times. It's one of those things I can find entertaining certainly. Um, look it up if you want to know more about it, but you know what? It didn't give her a whole film career, but she's gone on to do other interesting stuff. That's the important thing. And I will always have a fondness of Baywatch. She wasn't my favourite when it started out. She was, I was like, wow, okay, I like this person. But then she wasn't my favourite in Baywatch as time went on. Um, so I was won over by some of the other cast. But still, it's iconic. Now, as you can see, you've got these from the film. But... It was, this is the comic book in which it's based. And you can see why they selected her to play the part. So this is more some of the comic art. I've not read the comic book, so I don't know a lot about it. So that's barbed wire. Now what's this? I have to remind myself, I forgot I had some others in here. Adventures in Fantasy. So these are very collect, variable, uh, very, start again. Various collectible cards from comic images. And again, they're done by different artists from different uh, comics. We've got these, uh, Nostalgia, and uh, these are of course from Hook with the wonderful uh, Robin Williams there. Um, got a few of those, not a lot, and they, you can see on the back they will make a larger picture. What are these ones? Let's remind myself. What are these ones? I don't remember these ones. Um, where are they from? They're, they're all telling a story. Oh, something called Dark? Let's get one out and have a look. Uh, Dark Dominion. So that was a comic book, I do believe. I'm not sure it looks like something possibly from Image. Oh no, or is that Defiant? I think I remember that print. I don't believe they exist now, but I think they were very 90s. Uh, times so they sort of give you a bit of a story on those, so they're interesting. Um, ah, I've got some of these community comics ones, I don't know why I didn't group them together. Do apologize about that. Ah, baseball cards. What possibly were the ones that I started with that got me into uh, into trading cards? Which is funny actually, because that's a more of an American thing, baseball cards. But I just remember getting them at a card boot sale, and then vague, vague memory, and I think that may have started me off on them. But yeah, these are more recent ones. These ones, and that's that. 